Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon brackish tank, although technically it's not really brackish water anymore. I've sort of diluted it down. We're just below the level of technically being considered brackish, but nonetheless, I still call this my brackish tank. It's been my brackish tank for years, and that's just what I call it. Anyway, we're going to do a water change on it tonight, and we're going to get a lot of those dead snail shells out of there. That's all that white stuff you see at the bottom. The way I do that is I use a simple hose without the gravel vac on there, and I just have to be careful to try not to suck up uh, too much of the gravel. I'm going to lose some of the gravel, but I can always put that back in the tank later. I just don't want to suck up too much of it, and if you get a little too aggressive with it, you'll also clog the hose up, and that causes issues while you're doing it. Uh, we're probably going to do more than five gallons tonight, but we're going to start with this, and then we might move to the other... Uh, python siphon you know in the other room and then we can talk about the tank a little bit while we're doing that Now it's been suggested that I take these old snail shells and I can put them back in my tank that doesn't have very much calcium in it. Um, my one tank does have a lot of snails in it, but they have very, very soft shells because of the lack of calcium. And if I were to put these shells in there, it would give them either something to chew on or they would dissolve into the water, I guess. Trying to keep my head out of the way of the camera, but I need to see what's going on in the back there. So I don't worry too much about those snails in that tank. I do feed them to butter beans sometimes, but as far as I'm concerned, they can simply function for their meat, not the hard crunchiness of their shells. That can just be food for him. My snail breeding tank that I do actually breed snails for the purposes of feeding butter bean, that tank I put cuddle bones in it and I also put eggshells in it. And between the two of them, there's always plenty of calcium and the shells on the snails in those tanks actually stay pretty hard. I'm also sucking up a few little spots of red cyanobacteria in the back there. Get some of this crud out of here real quick and that is full. So that was five gallons. Liggity split. And I don't know whether I want to do five more gallons with that. I think I will. I'll siphon a bunch more of that dead plant material out of there. So let me go dump this and then we'll get started again. All right, this time we're going to focus on getting those plants cleaned up a little bit. I'm backing as much dead plant material out of here as I am. Cyanobacteria and mold and all kind of crud that's building up in these plants. I'm also pulling a bunch of plants out. That one seems determined to get in there.
roots are so long I can't pull the plant out of it and suck it back in. And that is 10 gallons. So we're going to go ahead and just get the tank filled back up after that. That got a large percentage of that stuff out of there. Now when I fill this back up, I am going to run mostly fresh water back in from the sink. I run my water through a softening and treatment system and everything, so I don't have to worry about chlorine or anything. But I am going to add some marine salts in there today too, and we're going to make sure the salinity is where I want it today. So let me get started on that, and we'll have a look at the tank once I'm all done. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing you me getting in there and wiping the glass down, but I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and then we can have a little chat about the tank uh, once I'm all done with the little fiddly bits. And there's your finished product. So Butterbean's still skulking around in the back. He's been swimming up and down in the corner by the heater. He always tends to do that when he's upset, and he usually does that, looks like he's doing now, for quite a while after a water change. So I did test the salinity. I used my refractometer. We are at 1.002. So we're well underneath of the brackish level at this point. But when I was filling the tank back up, I just kind of eyeballed it. I poured some salty water in there. As I've said, it doesn't really matter with the brackish uh, tank. If you've got urihaline fish or fish that we'll call brackish fish, by nature of what a brackish fish is is an animal that can live in a wide variety you know wide variety or wide range of salinities and therefore i don't need to be precise about my salinity when i'm finished and what i did was i mixed up a bucket of salty water while the um big python hose was filling the tank back up with fresh water and then I just poured some of the salt water in and mixed it together. And then I got the salt water bucket filling back up again in the other room and then promptly forgot about it. And then it overflowed and I had water everywhere and I had to get out the wet dry vac. And subsequently I never wound up adding any more salty water to the tank. And so we're a little bit lower than I wanted to be. I wanted to be about 1.003, but... Again, 1.002 is certainly close enough, uh, especially when you don't have to be really precise when you're talking about these brackish environments. So you saw basically everything I did. All I did uh, off camera was wipe the glass down, uh, and that's not a big deal. I also did get in full disclosure and went around into the back where the filter intake is, and that was all gunged up with uh, java fern and cyanobacteria was growing on it. And so I scooped all that off with my hand and pulled that out just in one big nasty clump and threw that away. And so that's pretty much it. I didn't mess with the filter and I didn't do any additional water changing or anything after the uh, we stopped videoing from before. I did more vacuuming up and cleaning up of water than anything else. So there you go. Just a quick look at the brackish tank before and after. I know a lot of people enjoy Butterbean's feeding videos, so I will get in there real soon and I'll do another feeding video. You can tell he's already getting ready for dinner time now. He's probably wondering why I'm standing in front of the tank so long and no snails have magically appeared for him. But there you go, I got a nice clean tank again. So alright everybody, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like my fan page over on Facebook. I will put a link down below, and you can also find me at Dan Haichu, one and only. And I've got a fan page over on Facebook called Dan Haichu's Fish Adventures. So it'll be a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'll post some stuff over there that won't get posted over here on YouTube, little miscellaneous odds and ends kind of stuff that's too short to really make a video out of but we'll wind up getting posted over there. So if you're on Facebook, check out my fan page. Hopefully it'll be a lot of fun for all of us. So thanks for watching this one. Make sure you are subscribed over here on my YouTube channel. Make sure you ring that bell so you get notified. I try to post at least one video every day. Sometimes you'll get a lot more than that. Depends on what kind of mood I'm in. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget this one here is my brackish tank, even though it's technically not brackish. <laughs> See you real soon on the next one.